greetings from Star Office on OS2 on the Pocket 386. And this indeed is what today's video is going to be all about. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino greeting you live from his Linux workstation, aka 15 year old laptop. <laughs> and today's topic is again OS2 Warp 3 on the Pocket 386 modern vintage computer. So the Pocket 386 is a sort of modern pro day produced gadget but with a retro architecture featuring an AMD 386 processor, 8 megabytes of RAM, a 2 gigabyte compact flash card natively coming populated with Windows 3.11 or Windows 95 depending on what you order and so on and so forth letting the heart beating for the 80s or early 90s to jump in joy. Now in a in another video I show you in detail how you can install OS 2. Well that's lovely but you certainly want to have also some sort of software. DOS software, in particular real mode DOS software is an evident candidate but certainly people like to have also an office suit on their machines and installing Star Office 3.1 is going to be the topic of today's video to that purpose. Star Office is in reality something like the grandmother of LibreOffice. And here on winworldpc.com you can find versions of it. And in particular here is a CD-ROM image which I'm going to be using in this video that gives you Star Office 3.1 for Windows and OS 2, which is marvelous. And this I downloaded and unpacked in that directory here, so here you see the ISO file, and now the point is to put that into the Pocket 386 hard disk so as to enjoy the comfort of an office suit from there. But the question is how? because evidently the Pocket 386 doesn't have a CD-ROM drive and once again we shall be resorting therefore to Camu. The Camu emulator is allowing to install and run an OS2 system just as if it were on the real hard disk and today we shall go one step further for we shall indeed use the real hard disk. I have as we are speaking, connected my compact flash card of the Pocket 386 in a compact flash card reader attached via USB to the laptop and therefore the hard disk of the machine, the real hard disk, is appearing here as dev sdb. And so in today's effort we shall not be creating a separate virtual image of OS2 which we shall then transfer via DD onto the compact flash card but we shall be working with the real compact flash card. And so we will be starting here Camu system i3 86 so the 32 not the 64 bit version again with 16 megabytes ram the drive is the real compact flash card the machine is again ISA PC architecture CPU 486 simply because my version of Camu at least is not seeming to be working with 386 CD-ROM the Star Office CD-ROM and to boot the drive C please. So pressing here enter. Yay! Control Alt and F, Control Alt and F. Yeah, it's giving us a proper view of the thing. So we shall now be having the exact same system that would be booting on the Pocket 386 start here live in the Camu virtual machine. So to say only the disk is real and the entire other system is emulated. 
when configsys does not handle something like some driver doesn't find its its device and so on it just tells you to press enter go ahead do that nothing terrible happens and yeah here we are just let me adjust again the viewport it's doing its little indexation ah very lovely I didn't want anything in particular but okay this is unexpected I believe what it just did is that it started the CD-ROM drive in some fashion alt space whoopsie I should have myself captured here please close just close it we don't want to find anything we actually just wanted to run the command prompt there we shall go to D which is our CD-ROM drive and then when you make dir you are seeing here a couple of directories we will go to English as there is by the way also an acrobat reader but it was somehow complaining that it cannot run in DOS real mode and I decided not to pursue it but you know if you would be looking into it <laughs> that might be interesting too yeah and then you are seeing here in the English version prod which must be like the product for OS 2, Windows 3.1 or Windows 95 and we will go to the prod OS 2 version this thing is not case sensitive and when you say dear yeah there you're having all sorts of things but in particular there should be this thing and it is and we're going to do that now set up and now the real star office will be installed on the real hard disk by the way this is so lovely so we created in the other video a 240 megabyte disk of which apparently less than a hundred have been really used for OS 2 and that's exactly where we wanted to install things too and from actually from the whole star office I think they're like two really useful programs just like with Microsoft Office you really mostly care about the spreadsheet function and the word processing function now please note that today's effort is one of principle I am showing you star office but on that ISO on that CD image file there could have been anything including the possibility that it is an ISO file that you create you could use ISO files this way in order to transport things into your hard disk you know DOS programs or whatever else should you not wish to handle the HFS file system format unless it actually used FAT but I think it used really HFS in, in your operating system of choice so using the camo emulator allows you to transport things via ISO images at least into the system and also out of the system if you also attach for instance a, uh, let's just say okay if you attach a virtual floppy drive yeah please do change the config sys file you know you could put in like an empty virtual floppy and put things out of OS 2 onto that floppy and then mount that floppy and get your stuff from it so it's nice to have something like camo in order to handle all of those things in a virtual fashion so now allegedly the installation has been successfully completed and now I am supposed to restart in order to have the thing work yeah sure it's not uh, safe to turn off my computer control alt and F uh, control alt and G I shall do so and I believe that I want to reboot it one more time not to install anything but to adjust 
the view of things control alt and f lets me see things full screen because i don't really have a working mouse under the pocket 386 and here i have one that of the host operating system so i might be able to do some adjustments easier than would be otherwise possible and we are nearly inside OS2. I think there's one more failed thing where I need to press enter, but no. No, no, we straight went there. I think we again lost aspect ratio, but here we are again back. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it insists on showing me the last thing I used. Hey there. Let me close then the command prompt. I mean, I typed exit, but here we are. And here is the start office, well, dock or whatever you call it. And we can place it down here. And here we have our start office programs. And when you start here, the writer, star writer, then it will greet you exactly with a somewhat weird window like I understand that may be useful for someone but I'm not a fan and I actually prefer to have it closed also for space reasons I like to condense that as far as possible and apart from that make the whole thing large so yeah that's how I like to use star writer and now when I exit it see the funny effect is that if I now click on it and it restarts then it starts the way I last used it I love that <laughs> and that of course makes your life perhaps even easier than on Windows Star Calc is having the same issue really it too has a weird formatting window here just in our face and this this the standard field here could be narrowed down and we could as well maximize the thing and exit and these are really your two useful programs the others are for fun there so you're having some drawing program and just showing you what they look like okay I will just close that too and narrow that down as well I don't think that I will be using that much in particular <laughs> given my present lack of a functioning mouse on the pocket 386 but I should certainly obtain a PS2 mouse from somewhere. We don't want to open here anything, but we do want to maximize it. So next time we open it, it opens maximized. We're exiting it as well. So star image. You know, they're sort of repetitive. Star draw, star draw, star image. Like, yeah, I understand that they are complementary, but also a little bit, yeah. And, and then you're having star chart, which is really funny because yes, it does start with this chart didn't make that good luck in figuring that out but what is interesting is that star writer if one were so inclined to use it would allow you to hello there <laughs> would allow you to save that at least formally in the Microsoft Word 6.0, yeah, WinWord 6 format. Like, I will not do that now, but you would be having that possibility. And now I'm going to say exit, save my changes now, and now I'm going to say shut down. And if this all worked properly, Control Alt F, then Control Alt G, getting out of Camus mouse capture and saying sync then now taking out my SD card I should be able to boot 
from my pocket 386 and have an office suit there. Wish me luck. All right, let's do it. And now comes the great question, will we see our star office dock? Well, I don't see the dock, I'll have to admit that. But I mean, I do see the folder up here. So I very much assume that if I do something like Alt-Tab, yeah, am I going around there? Alt-Tab or just Alt-Tab. Ah, no, it does start. It just takes a good while for it to do so. Very good. So we are having star office and alt tab, alt tab, alt tab. Yeah, here with alt tab, I got there. And then how do I select any of these? I don't know. <laughs> alt space, no. Window list, okay, T. Yes. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure how to select anything from there. Alt W, no. Alt whatever doesn't do anything. Uh, maybe I cannot use without a mouse, which I do not presently have, these amenities and will need to do things more primitively, right? Is, is this the case though? Ah, finally. Okay, I tried to turn on the mouse. The mouse was not turned on, but this made my arrow keys not work. So I believe the whole thing is working if I just go to star office exactly and then start to do things with the mouse, but no, maybe not. Okay, then, then maybe I was wrong. Okay, let's just go then to the folder star office. And okay, from here, then I can start whatever I wish. Star writer, for instance. I'm not entirely sure how this is usable. I have never used it in serious, you know. <laughs> I believe like, you know, not so few people. But being a predecessor of Open Office and LibreOffice, and in fact, having itself a good name, I trust it shouldn't be too difficult. Can I write now? O or Shift O? Is this the big O? Is this a small O? No, Some, something's going wrong here. 
Okay, caps lock, this is the big O. This is a small O, this is a big O. Okay, fine. Okay, then this, this takes, <laughs> this is text written on the pocket 386. This is all nice, but can I maybe make the thing easier to see? Alt view maybe. Zoom. Yeah, that would be nice. Can we go for a custom percentage of 125% please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then that actually works. This is then more easily visible. Can I mark it with shift and arrows just as in modern times? Absolutely, I can. And then, of course, I could also go at Alt O to format it and to change the character to something else. So even without a mouse, this appears to be pretty, okay, I'll make it size 16. This appears to be pretty usable. Oopsie, I think I pressed, uh, pressed something and then deleted it. So alt backspace is undo, okay. Yeah, so I had overwritten it with a tab character while it was marked. But here you have it. Okay then, this is text written on the pocket 386. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think this experiment can be declared a success. Certainly I am very grateful for your having watched this video and very much hope you enjoyed it. If you're not a member yet of our friendly little community, please consider subscribing. Until we meet again, I wish you a wonderful time. See you hopefully soon. And from me, goodbye.